How's everybody doing? And thanks for tuning in to Wicked Warnings, your number one source for construction and emergency safety strobe lighting and equipment for cars, vans, buses, bicycles, tricycles, jet skis, wave runners, everything in between, especially our favorite thing, brand new Super Duties. What you're looking at here in our newly renovated shop is a 2022 Ford Super Duty. This particular truck is going to do a little bit of duty downtown. It is the parking lot maintenance vehicle for Soldier Field. The Bears. So if you happen to be downtown at Soldier Field, keep an eye out for this truck. You might just see it running around the S&P parking lot uh, where our home team, the Bears, play. So, um, not sure if you guys saw this or not. Got a nice new wall wrap going on here. Very cool. It also goes all the way around the corner there on the way out. And we got something new coming in for underneath the mirrors right there. What you're looking at on this particular truck is a combination of white and green, it was done by request. We worked together with the owner of this vehicle, gave them exactly what they were looking for. So let me show you a little closer and explain what we got going on here. Alrighty, I darkened the camera just a tiny bit to show you the colors a little more clearly. In the front grill there is our Thin X Green White. And that's a very popular light. You can either select to flash green or flash white. It has a variety of different patterns. We're also using that same light on a different pattern in the side badges. This pattern is a split pattern. You can see how the light alternates within itself, but they are synchronized. As you see, both turn green and white at the same time. Synchronization and patterns are completely user selectable. Now above that, we've got a Phoenix Fusion 49 inch light bar. Now that was custom ordered in green with a couple of white heads in it. Nice mix of green and white. And we have the alley takedowns flashing in that light bar currently as well. It does have takedowns and alley, and we've added in two additional white heads in the front for the takedowns, which I'll show you. As you can see there, we've got four forward-facing modules that illuminate steady white in the takedown mode, as well as two side-facing modules. And due to our new mirrors, I can slide over this way, and you can kind of see the side-facing module in that mirror. Now you can use that flood feature with or without the warning. So if you happen to have the warning on, the flood feature will still work as you can see here. Now, of course, those white floodlights are washing out the camera, but what you could see if you were here in person is that all of the remaining LED heads in that light bar, which are green, are in fact flashing uh, and the, the white is steady. Here's a little bit of a side view for you. Now, we were asked to keep that light bar as snug to the roof line as possible because this truck does go in and out of several parking garages. So what we did is we ordered a back rack and we trimmed it and we kept that light bar basically right above the roof. That's about as low as possible to mount a light bar on one of these trucks and it'll allow them to get in and out of all the parking garages without damage to the light bar and cast the warning all around as needed. Now, here's a side shot for you. And don't worry, I'm going to turn off all this warning and show you the mounting at the end of the video uh, so you can get a good picture on how we did everything. There will also be snippets in the end of this video all about how I installed what I installed because this truck also has a siren and a PA system. Of course, he's using that system on private property. So there's nothing illegal about that on private property. He has a siren and a PA system that, uh, that he can... Uh, had the electronic air, sis, uh, air horn or the siren. So if you see it on the front badges there, that's the same light head we used in the grill. That's our thin X LED. And we did a solid pattern on the badge where the entire light head switches between green and white. So you can choose a variety of different patterns for that badge uh, and all colors are available in that thin X. So if green and white are not your jam, you can definitely get this package in purple or amber or blue or red, whatever you like. And I said, as we pan around a little bit to the back, you can see there how our TIR3 complements the rear. It's a side fire light. We mount directly under the tail light on these new Super Duties. It's basically an application that works from 2017 all the way to 2022, uh, possibly even the 23s. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, from 2017 all the way up to 2022, you can mount a nice side fire light right on the small plastic trim underneath the tail light there, and uh, you see how awesome it works facing sideways. Very, very good for a plow truck because they always seem to be backing out into traffic. 
So what better place for a light than a side fire right at the rear bumper there for something that's consistently backing out? So it's a great location, and I recommend it to all plow vehicles, as well as those badges right there. They really do a great job casting the light backwards. And what I mean by that is as I move my camera here just to about a 45 degree angle to the truck, you can see how much brighter that badge is. It sits right about a 45 degrees in that vent in the side badge. By the way, we have an awesome DIY tutorial on exactly how to take that badge out and how to mount that light there. So make sure you check out that tutorial on that badge installation and get yourself a set. Alrighty, working around towards the rear of the truck, the tailgate's missing because normally this truck has a very large salter that's in the back. Now the salter doesn't stick up any higher than the roof of the truck, so that light bar will carry right over the top of the salter just fine. But the normal duty for this truck will have a salter in it, so we didn't put any lighting uh, underneath the tailgate or in the bumper area just because of the salt and the damage that could be caused for that. As I said, worked hard with the owner on this, did exactly what he thought was best and what we agreed on. We did some white hideaway lights in the reverse lens there. Now those are side mounted. And they're a little bit of a tight fit, but it is possible. Again, they're side mounted from the side that's closest to the screws and you have to tuck the wire and fold it really nicely there and, uh, and be careful tightening them up that you don't crush it. But you are able to put a side mount strobe light hideaway in those taillights. And I don't know if you can see or not, but because we used our Hideaway Duo and our TIR3, they are in the same family of lights, so we were able to synchronize them on that pattern. We were able to X pattern our Low Dome White Hideaway Duo with our TIR3. Any color Low Dome Hideaway Duo will work with any color TIR3. They will synchronize on the same pattern if you select it, and they will be able to do this X pattern because they are in the same family of lights. Now, that's not true for every light. You can't mix and match all lights and have them synchronize and lock in patterns. But some of ours, you can, like this Low Dome Haw Duo and our TIR3. Alrighty, now for those interested in the tech and the mounting portion, this is where we're going to talk about that. That is the Wicked Warnings 100 watt speaker right there. It comes with a nice bale bracket, and we mounted it right to the bottom of the support there, the grill support, I guess you would call it. There's a plastic support member, and uh, it mounts very easily right there. Two bolts straight down. It was quite an easy mount. What I'll do is I'll uh, try to take you on a journey here and show you what I meant by that right there. That is where we have it mounted. Let me focus up for you, I apologize. There, you can kind of see there. It's mounted basically right there with the included bail bracket and a couple of stainless steel bolts that we had here in the shop. Now, as we go over this way, you can see here our Thin-X. I did clip a little bit of the grill for the wire routing and we did drill two holes pre-drilled into the grill bar here to mount this. So this thin X mount will leave a little bit of damage behind if you were to remove it, but this is a snowplow truck and it's going to work. And it was okay that we did this because we wanted to put them lights out a little bit edge and down because the snowplow headlights are going to be up in here. So this puts that light down and out a little bit on a little bit of an angle. So it'll actually kind of be useful while they're running their snowplow you can imagine what the snowplow headlights are going to be they're going to be right above that light uh to the right and left of the ford logo and uh that way we get that light down and over on a little bit of an angle and actually have some usage of that light i'll carry you around we'll go for a little walk here and show you the thin x of course i have that awesome video shows exactly how to do this and you can see that that light is very flush doesn't stick up or out at all I really like our Thin-X light in the badge there. It works extremely well. Now, of course, we are running all of this off of the factory auxiliary switches. So there's not really any switching to show you. We just went to the factory auxiliary switching. I'll show you a little bit on the back rack. It's just a standard back rack for a Super Duty. But what we did is we clipped the ears down, and we were able to use the Phoenix rack mount base for that light bar after we clipped those ears down. Clip the ears down, touch it up, put it back on there, put the plug, plastic plug back in it, and that way you can shorten up that headache rack just a touch. And you can see here how the light bar is mounted. And it casts over the roof of the truck just fine. I've tested it, it's not being blocked. It's at the right height there. Worked out just perfect.
Of course, we ran all the wiring for the light bar right down the other side, tucked it behind the rack there really nicely, and it's ran up the passenger side to the front where uh, it's ran to the auxiliary switches. And working our way down here, this is that side tail light mounting I was talking about. Sometimes you have to drop the bumper a little if somebody had set it extremely high. Uh, otherwise, it's nice to tuck right in there. And it's mounted on the plastic right there. Now you can mount a TIR3 there, a Lin 6, a Sound Off M Power 3. Uh, there's a lot of different lights that you can mount there. Our favorite is the TIR3 or the Lin 6. But as I said, the Sound Off also fits there as well as many others. And you can't really see the hideaway, but inside there, mounted from the side, that's where our hideaway light is. Yeah, you can't see that. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to talk a little bit about the technical part, about how we wired it, just to make it super easy for you guys to understand. The hideaway lights are carried forward with a 30-foot run of 18.5. I also ran some 22.5 power control from each of those TIR3s, and I joined the 22.5 and the 18.5 behind this tail light here. The hideaway base, the brain of the hideaway, is also right behind this tail light, and I ran the 18.5 forward all along the frame. Now, you don't necessarily need to take the synchronization forward. You don't need to take the pattern wires forward. So the 18.5 power control will give you a couple of extra wires in case you need to maybe do a reverse alarm or something like that. All that's really required to run forward is power and ground. So you will have three extra wires. However, if you want to take advantage of the flood feature of the Haw Duo, you can with that 18.5 because there's the white wire in there. So we're going to give you 30 foot of 18.5 and back here we're going to give you some 22.5. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of 22.5 because we also use it to run the badge lights in the front. Each one of those front badge lights was extended via 22.5 wire over to the auxiliary switches. So I'm going to give you 25 feet of the 22.5 wire so you can extend those badge lights and also extend these TIR3s back here. I'm going to give you 30 feet of the 18.3. This light bar and back rack is custom order. So you will need to reach out and we will discuss the light bar on a separate purchase. It is not part of this kit, but it's totally available. It has its own wiring harness that runs down and forward. So as far as the wiring on the light bar, that's going to come with the wiring that's required. Moving forward... We've got those badge lights here, and I almost forgot I'm going to bump that 25 feet up to 50 on the 22.5 because we also use the same 22.5 to extend those badge lights over to the auxiliary switches. Now, the badge lights uh, and the grill lights uh, run very easily off of 22.5, and we combined them, like I said, at the switches where you can set patterns and do your synchronization and anything else that you need. Now, as far as the siren, I'm going to have some more detail uh, on the end of this video about how and where we mounted the Carson Defender siren brain. And what we have here is our 100-watt speaker. So how does that all connect? Well, you're going to need to run two wires from the auxiliary switches for the way we did it and two wires for the speaker. And you're also going to need to run power and ground. All of that is going to go to the siren brain under the dashboard. So what am I going to give you to run that? I'm going to give you 25 feet of 16.2. That's your power and ground. That's going to run from the battery. I use the battery feed on the auxiliaries, but you can also go straight to the battery. Power ground back to the siren. I'm going to give you 25 feet of 18.2. That's a little lighter gauge. That's going to run from the speaker back to the brain. Okay, so now we've got power and ground covered, and we've got the speaker covered. The last thing we need to cover is the two switches that I used for auxiliary activation in this video. If you need more switch activation, if you want to do more things, you just need to run a more uh, higher conductor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 25 feet of 18.4 in there. And you can use two or four functions, whatever you want. That's going to go from your switches back to your siren brain. So you get 25 feet of 18.2 for the speaker, 25 feet of 16.2 for the power ground, and 25 feet of 18.4 for the controls that are going from the auxiliary switches back to the siren brain. And that's how that's all going to wire. Thank you for tuning in to Wicked Warnings. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Any questions or comments, be sure to drop them. I'll try my best to answer them, and we'll see you on the next video.